Hi, my name is David McCarthy, and I'm PGY1 at UPMC, and I'm going to be presenting on how the unruptured AVM intervention rate is inversely correlated with the ruptured AVM discharge incidence. I have no disclosures. A quick recap. So in 2013, the Aruba was published in The Lancet, show, demonstrating that interventional therapy with medical management was inferior for the treatment of cerebral AVMs to medical management alone. And this was done with an average follow-up of 2.7 years. And this is the cost regression. You can see that interventional therapy had a higher adverse event rate. In 2020, this year, the final update for Aruba was published in Lancet Neurology, demonstrating a similar hazard ratio and similar conclusion with an average follow-up of 4.2 years. And I want you to remember these years because they'll come back later in my presentation. Of course, as we all know, Aruba was met with widespread criticism. A 2017 meta-analysis meta identified 31 published critiques, mostly focused on the inadequate follow-up to capture the natural AVM rupture risk, which is what we're going to be primarily focused on. And the adverse event included headache, which is typically a side effect of um, DSA embolization, and a recruitment bias with a low number of Spetzelmartin in grade one and two treated with surgery. We set out to analyze the National Inpatient Sample, or NIS, from 2010 to 2017 in order to compare the, to see the effect that Aruba had on the unruptured and ruptured AVM intervention rates. And we did this initially with a pre and post dichotomous analysis, splitting the pre period from 2010 to 2013 to the post period of 2014 to 2017. So let's look at ruptured AVMs first. Aruba really didn't have much effect on ruptured AVMs. It's what we kind of expect since it was an unruptured AVM trial. Um, there's no overall change in intervention decision, meaning to treat or not to treat ruptured AVMs. However, there was a significant change amongst treatment options, though we hypothesized this doesn't have much to do with the Aruba trial. Um, embolization saw an increase and overall surgery saw a decrease. Let's take a look at unruptured AVMs. As you can see, there's a stark decrease in interventions following the Aruba trial, from a 28% intervention rate before Aruba to a 22% following Aruba. The next aim was to examine when this change occurred. And we did this in a continuous fashion. And as you can see, we looked at linear regression first. And over the whole time period, we saw a 1.5% decrease in intervention rate for unruptured AVMs. To identify whether or not a change occurred at a specific point during this linear, or this period, this continuous period, you run, we ran something called a segmented linear regression, which will identify, if there is one, a change point. And this is what we found. As you can see, there was a significant change point that occurred between the years 2014 and 2015. And this is right after the Aruba trial was published. Before 2014, there was no change in intervention rate. And afterwards, there's a 3.7% decrease per year in unruptured AVM intervention rate. So we showed that there was an overall decreased treatment um, following Aruba. And this happened right after Aruba. The next finding, which is the primary finding of our paper, was actually accidental. Um, while we were analyzing this, we found that there was an increased AVM, a ruptured AVM incidence following the period of Aruba. So before Aruba, there's 14.7% of all AVM discharges were ruptured AVMs. But after Aruba, 18.6% of all AVM discharges um, were ruptured. And this was very significant. And so we decided to dig in a little deeper and expand our analysis to 2003, to, from 2017 to 2000, or 2003 to 2017. And we decided to trend the annual unruptured AVM intervention rate, or AIR, which is the number of total treated AVM discharges over total AVM discharges every year, to the annual ruptured AVM incidence, or ARI, which is the ruptured AVM discharges over total AVM discharges every year. And this is what we found. Um, as you can see, the intervention rate, which is in red up top, um, shows a significant decrease over the epoch until 2014, where it then continues to decrease at a, a rapid rate um, of 3.7%. However, this was not significant and only trended towards significance. Uh, for rupture incidence shown in the blue, 
we saw that there was no change between 2011 and then there was an average increase of rupture incidence for 1.2% every year following. We then correlated AVM rupture incidence to AVM intervention rate. And we found that, as you can see, they were very inversely correlated. And um, as you can see, this has increased with uh, further time. So uh, farther away from Aruba and then post Aruba in the black. Um, and while correlation typically excludes causation, in this case, we can kind of think of an, as an exception. Theoretically, if we had a perfect intervention and a perfect screening rate for AVMs, um, meaning that when you're born, you're screened for an AVM, and if you have one, it's treated perfectly, and there's no side effects. And then we can assume that, back to this graph, that the intervention rate would be 100%, and the rupture rate, a rupture incidence, no one would rupture because all of them would be cured. However, conversely, if we had a 0% intervention rate, so intervention rate is down to zero, the rupture incidence would then plateau at some unknown level. It wouldn't be 100% because we know that not every person with an AVM has a, um, is going to rupture during their lifetime. And so mathematically, our results are kind of expected. However, they are reportable because the rupture incidence that we're observing is somewhat increasing and it's profound. Um, so the goal is to turn data into information, information so I put this here because everything before this slide has been data driven and everything following this slide is going to be hypothesis driven. Um, we know that annual AVM rupture, is, uh, rupture risk is two to 4% per year per individual. Therefore, if an individual is not treated in one year, their, their whole lifetime rupture risk is not gonna be reflected in the same year's rupture incidence increase. Instead, that risk is going to be fractionally distributed over every sub subsequent year of that individual's life. Similarly, um, we can kind of use that data, that cumulative risk factor to explain this graph. Um, there's an eight year lag of a constant decrease in intervention rate before any change was observed in the rupture incidence. Now, what does this mean? It means two things. One, the the change here, the 3.7% per year change seen following Aruba cannot possibly be reflected in the current rupture incidence increase, suggesting that we might see a higher incidence of rupture in the future. And secondly, the 4.2 years of follow-up that Aruba had cannot possibly capture the natural history, or it suggests it cannot capture the natural history of AVM rupture incidents, as you see by this eight year lag that we see with, before any change in the national trends. So in conclusion, unruptured AVM intervention has decreased following Aruba. This decrease is correlated with an increase in AVM rupture incidents. We observed the eight year lag between a decrease in intervention rate and an increase in rupture incidence. And we hypothesize that the AVM incidence rupture, a rupture incidence is likely to increase in the coming years. And I wanna give a special thanks to the team, Dr. Brad Gross, Dr. Evan Luther, and Dr. Robert Stark. Thank you very much.